you doing? I'm CK with UPP Turbo Systems, and today we're going to be going over the twin turbo installation of the Chevy SS. Now, this kit is actually the same as it was for the Pontiac G8, um, so it's a predecessor to that car. So rather than reshooting the whole video and going through the whole install instructions on this one, what we're going to be doing is showing you the highlighting the key differences between them. So you'll actually watch and follow along with the G8 installation. Um, this is just going to show you the key changes and some slight differences between the two cars to be able to make this system fit on the Chevy SS. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is the ABS module has changed slightly. Um, we're still going to be actually moving it to the same place. We're still moving it to the same location, but the bolting and the mounting for it has changed. The uh, two bolt holes that they had on the G8 version, they've taken away from us. So we were using this bracket here and basically relocating it off of the fender here to hold it. These two bolt holes no longer exist. So we have a different bracket now for the SS, which is going to be this one with a little horseshoe cut out of it right here and it's got a slight twist to it this is actually going to go down in we're going to bolt this using two of our self-tapping screws right to the actual strut tower here and then it's going to go back in these two bolt holes here bolt up with the original factory bolts um, for the abs module there so the actual location of it and everything is going to be the same as far as removing it here um, as far as drilling out and, and removing the actual bracket assembly that's here, all of that is, stays the same. We're just using a different bracket to basically mount it in the same place. Um, now, it is important to note the uh, brake lines did change slightly as well. Um, they're the same length, same everything. The thread pattern on them is what actually changed. So they are a different set of brake lines for the SS versus the uh, G8. Uh, but it's basically all going right into the same location here. The other variance that we had is instead of running the wiring down across the bottom here where it was real close to the heat, the SS actually has enough wiring that we're actually going to, this was down here, we pull this up and we're going to run it over the top of the strut tower versus down on the side of it there right along the frame rail. So we can unplug from here, reconfigure some of this stuff, and we're taking all of that wiring that was on the top of the frame rail and bringing it up here. The only thing that's actually down here now that we have heat wrapped up, as you can see, is the actual plug for um, the ABS uh, sensor going out into the actual wheel well area there. All of that we're still going to go ahead and heat wrap and tape up. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is actually remove this brace. Now this is actually riveted right here and here to the firewall itself. And then this is going down and covering up um, right in this back corner here, some of the brake lines and the fuel lines that are coming in there. Um, where this brace sits, it actually pokes out just a little bit too far down in the corner. Um, the, the down pipe is going to come and go right through here. So this brace is in the way. We're going to go ahead and remove it. And then we're just going to make sure that the fuel and brake lines are pushed and tucked up real nice and tight in that corner so they're out of the way. And we'll go ahead and wrap those with some heat wrap as well to keep them safe and protected from the heat of the downpipe. So this just sits back in there. Now, it is behind the actual, uh, there's like a little heat mat that's on there. So you have to pull that back away. And then what we're going to do is just hit these. Um, in fact, you can see this one didn't even come out. We just went in and actually hit it with an impact um, and chiseled it and just popped the heads of the rivets off. They're aluminum rivets, so they come off real easily. And then this bracket, we're just going to take off and we can go ahead and dispose of this now. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is actually the power wire here. This is the main power coming from the battery in the trunk. Um, this has changed slightly. Um, it's actually protruding out right through the firewall on the SS here. Um, and it's actually a plastic bracket that points it down. So what we're going to do is use a pry bar and twist it like this so it actually shoots more out towards the driver's side outside of the car here. And what that's going to do is actually shoot the power wire off to the side so we're not pushing it right into the downpipe. That's going to give us a little bit more clearance room for the downpipe. From there, we're going to run this main power wire coming up underneath the, uh, or I'm sorry, right over the top of the steering shaft that's there and under the brake uh, master cylinder here. And that's going to come up and plug right in over here. Now on the G8s, we actually mounted this assembly back over here up in the corner. It's actually a lot easier on this one. We're going to mount it right up on the front side here. And now we don't have to mess with any of the wiring. Um, so on the G8, we had to replace some of the wiring and reconfigure what was going where. Um, if we do it this way, we don't have to touch any of the wiring. We're just going to basically extend it. It's got enough wiring slack that we can pull it up out of the way and mount it right on the front here. Um, we are still going to go ahead and heat wrap everything to make sure it's nice and insulated and protected from the heat of the turbo, uh, but it's a lot easier as far as the installation in that manner. 
All right, next up we're gonna be doing is the AC lines here. Um, now these did change from the G8 to the SS. They used to be two separate lines. They've actually introduced it to where the smaller line actually feeds in as part of the bigger line now. Um, that being the case, we can't actually bend these and push them out of the way like we did on the G8. So what we're gonna do instead is actually replace them. So we're gonna pull this whole assembly here off um, and we're gonna be replacing both of these lines. Um, and we're gonna be doing it with the uh, steel braided lines here. Um, so what we've done is actually made fittings that are going to mock up and simulate this fitting here um, and that converts it over to a dash and a dash four as opposed to um, the hard lines that are here that gives us a lot more flexibility in moving them around we've done the same for the other end down here with the dash four which is actually going to go on the condenser um, so this one's going to made up in place for that one and then for the other one where it bolts up here we've got this one that is actually going to go bolt up and be able to plug our lines back in. So all of these fittings here are going to allow us to replace that hard line with this nice flexible line. That way we can run it. And we're going to actually come right off of the uh, um, firewall here, loop up over this and come down here. And we'll show you the actual routing on that in a second. Um, also getting replaced is going to be the fill port. So to do the fill port, we're going to be relocating the low side fill. And that's going to be up here um, towards the front. And what we've got is actually a dash 10 with the uh, dash four adapter sticking off the side of it. And then this is our low side fill port here, which will screw right directly onto that there. Now it is important to note for any of these NPT fittings, which is gonna be primarily here, and then the one we plug into the actual condensers or any of them that go into like these fittings here, um, we're gonna use uh, yellow Teflon tape, yellow PTFE as opposed to the white. The yellow is actually made for gas, so it survives and it holds up a lot better, uh, prevents leaking a lot better than the white does we found over time. All right, now right back here you can see we've got our adapter bolted up to the firewall. This is just using the uh, factory nut that came off of it here. Now we would do want to, on the back side of this, we would do want to reuse the two uh, O-ring gaskets that are actually came off the factory line. This is going to bolt up in place. Then we're going to attach our dash four line. Um, and our dash 10 line, both of these have a 45 degree bend and that's gonna shoot them off to the side, right up over here, up over the fender well, and then down. Now on the dash 10 line right here is where we're gonna add in our low side pressure fill port. And then that is going to plug directly into our dash 10 to 3 8 which is going into this adapter. And this adapter is actually gonna bolt to the existing line. So the existing line that's down in here um, it's a hard line right here, but it is flexible down below, so you have a lot of movement room. And we're just going to basically straight shot that right up into this here. Now for the dash four line, we're going to follow the same routing over the fender well here. And we're going to shoot it right down here to this corner of the AC condenser on the back side. And this fitting here, again, same thing for the AC condenser. We're going to reuse the O-rings off of it, and it's going to bolt up in there like that. Now this has the eighth inch NPT to dash four and a 90 degree bend, and we want it coming off this way. And the straight side of our high pressure uh, dash four AC line is just gonna come right into the side of it here. And this is of course right behind this inner cooler here, but this bolts up exactly where we pulled the existing line off of. All right, now for installing the intercooler, um, the front of this has actually been reconfigured a little bit compared to the G8. This has actually got the same substructure as uh, the Camaros do. So before we had these tall or these long brackets here that kind of went back, we're actually replacing those with our Camaro brackets, which are going to be these short ones. Now these are going to bolt right through um, the existing holes here. Now the hole only goes through the top side, so what we're going to do is these two holes here, we're going to finish drilling them out um, so they're all the way drilled through. And then this is going to attach from the bottom. Now, what you want to do is loosely bolt up all this stuff, um, but don't actually tighten them down because the brackets don't go directly backwards. They actually both kind of point inwards like this. Uh, so we'll get everything bolted up in there um, and then actually tighten them down. Now, on the bolts going into the actual uh, intercooler itself, um, they do need to be raised up from the bottom level of this. So we're actually using some washers and some spacers, which I'll show you here in just a second. All right, now here you can see where we've got the intercooler brackets bolted up going through the substructure here. Uh, these are the 50 millimeter long bolts. So they're M8 by 50 with a nut on them. And then back here, we've got the M8 by 40 millimeter long. And you can see we've got a series of washers stacked up in there. Um, usually takes about uh, eight to 10 per side. 
and that's going to give us our spacing. Um, so we have a, a series of washers in there that we can kind of adjust it to the size you need. We basically want the intercooler to be sitting right up on here, but not actually like pressed and crammed down into it. All right, now in order to mount the intercooler and install it in here, we are going to have to remove this radiator support and we are going to modify it a little bit. We're going to actually shave down some of the back side right in here. Um, so what we'll do is actually unbolts from here. There's a couple bolts up on top. There's a couple bolts right around the side here. This whole front radiator support fascia is going to come off um, and that will give us a chance to slide the intercooler kind of up in from the bottom. Then what we'll do is right along here is we're actually going to cut the back side of this and we're going to shave it so that way it clears the intercooler all back in through here. This is the easiest, basically just do it kind of trial and error, like set it up there, see if it's still hitting, shave a little bit more off the backside. Uh, we don't want to shave too much where it's super thin in here, but you can see we still got a pretty good structure on here and we've just made clearance enough to get the actual intercooler as well as the silicone couplers coming out of there. All right, next up we're going to be going over is the coil pack installation. Now we're still going to use the same brackets um, like we do on the G8, but instead of mounting them actually up top because there's not really a whole lot of room up there, what we're going to do is actually mount them right down in front of the engine here, right in front of the crank pulley. So we have this bracket here, which is going to mount these guys to it like that. And then these two larger holes on the either end here are actually going to bolt to your existing bolts that are there. Um, there's a uh, plastic, your plastic undercarriage there is held up in place by two bolts and this is going to span right across those two bolts. So you basically just pull those out, slide this in there and then re-put them back in, back through the plastic uh, under tray as well as back through um, this bracket before it goes in. Now to assemble this, what we're going to do is actually align the coils out very similar to what we do on the G8. Um, it's just going to basically bolt between these two brackets with the piece of all thread um, and with the plastic spacers. Now there's two different sizes of the plastic spacers. Four of them are going to be the smaller one inch ones and then the rest of them are going to be the inch and a quarter. Um, the coils actually did change around slightly on this one to where they're a little bit bigger and bulkier of a coil so we have to space it out. So the smaller uh, spacers are going to go on the ends here. So one on the top and bottom and one on the top and bottom. All the ones that are in the middle are actually going to be the longer inch and a quarter plastic spacers. Um, and then we're just going to mount them up with a piece of all thread and with the nuts on each side. So you're just going to make one big coil bracket here. Um, we're also including with the kit is the coil pack relocation extensions. So they're 24 inch extensions. That's basically going to be this wire here. Bolts up from where the existing coil was and it's going to run down to where the new location of the coil packs are. So that way everything's going to be located down here. Um, we'll take a minute now and we'll go ahead and show you what it looks like once it's installed inside the car. Um, also another thing to note is the um, plug wires. The lengths on those, um, I can't remember what they were on the G8 video, but on this one they're going to be a 25, 30, 35, and 40. And you're going to make two sets of each of those. So again that's uh, two of the 25 inches in length, two 30 inches in length, two 35, and then two 40. 25, 30, 35, 40, pretty simple, pretty easy to remember. Um, and those are going to actually go from each of the coil packs here and we're going to line it back up there. Now, just like the G8, we want to make sure when we pull the coil packs off, actually put a little marking on each of the coil packs so you remember uh, which side it goes to, whether it was driver's or passenger, as well as which corresponding cylinder. That's going to make it a lot easier after we reconnect the wiring and extend it out because um, we're pulling it off that, that pack assembly there. We don't want to get things jumbled up to where you get your firing orders out of place. So make sure you label them real clearly. That way you know when you plug everything back in, you're going to the right cylinders. All right, now if we come down here in the front of the engine and right down in here we can see the actual coil packs there mounted. And again, they're just mounted so they're all facing just directly up and bolted to that cross brace. And you can see right below it there is that plastic cover um, that we're actually going to be removing to put this up in and then put that plastic cover back up and bolt it in place. All right, so what we're doing is mounting the coils right down the front and then for the wires, they're actually just going to come right up and loop around. So you're going to have four on this side coming up and wrapping around that side of the engine. The four on this side come up and wrap around this side. So your shortest wires, the 25s, are obviously going to go in the front. The longest wire will go to the back there. And it's easiest to set up the, uh, the center ones in the middle as the front cylinders and then the outer ones is going to be the rear cylinders. And the wires are just going to kind of come and hug and go right underneath the exhaust manifolds on either side with the 90 degree boots and they're going to be facing down. So it's going to come off the coils, 
to the sides like this and then go up and hook right onto the spark plugs there. Um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and that cleans it up a lot up here so we don't have the coil pack sitting up front. All right, for this section, what we're gonna be doing is actually uh, modifying and replacing the radiator support brackets here. So this is that they changed the radiator around slightly um, this is actually going to cover the later model Camaros as well. So for some of you guys uh, with the later model Camaros, we might be referring you over to watch this video here. Um, they actually change where the location of the fill port is between these different cars. So we're going to be taking the radiator and pushing it back just like normal, um, but this bracket here has changed around slightly. So these are our brackets that were used to mount the radiator right up here on the front. So what we're going to do is take these off. We're going to remove these rubber isolators. There's a plastic insert in the middle pull that out first, then the rubber isolator will come out. The rubber isolators are gonna reinstall right back into our bracket here, and then the plastic insert goes back into there. And then this is gonna now bolt up in place right here. So these are gonna actually go up and link up to the radiator and hold it in place. And then the two bolt holes right here and here are gonna bolt right back up into our factory location there. So this is gonna be our vanity cover that covers up the top part here and holds our radiator in place. And here you can see the radiator support bracket installed and again with our rubber isolators and then that is the plastic bushing that's inside of it there so everything's bolted up nice and secure there all right so that about covers up the installation here as far as the differences between the two of them so for the rest of the installation you're actually just going to follow along with the g8 because it's got the same manifold same downpipes uh intercooler and the routing on the intercooler is all going to be the same um, so everything else pretty much transposes over and carries from one to the other um, there are just a couple small changes those are highlighted here again if you guys do have any questions or you run into any trouble we're always here to help be sure to drop us a line just shoot us over an email with pictures is usually the best way to help you out Thanks for watching.